Hi, I'm Mark Cook with Kid Plants Magazine. Welcome to the RV14. Obviously, the RV14 is not a completely new model. It's one of Van's newer models, but uh, we're here flying this particular airplane because it has a lot of very interesting updates. It's got a new version of the engine up front, and uh, we've been flying to, to suss out the performance. I'm here right. with Greg Hughes, who is the marketing maven for, uh, for Van's. Uh, thanks for taking me along for a ride. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, it's not hard to talk me into going flying, so <laughs> right. this works out pretty well, actually. The performance of this airplane is, is really very impressive, uh, but it really comes down to kind of a combination of things that you guys did to uh, to the existing platform, a lot of it's firewall forward. Walk me through some of the things you've done here. So our engineering team here at Ben's Aircraft, what, what they did was directly worked with both Lycoming and airflow performance, uh, both businesses, so kind of a three-way collaboration. To take a look at the RV-14 as a platform and say, uh, what could we do? So airflow performance from a, from a fuel delivery perspective, uh, live coming from an engine and also working with us to co-design uh, a good, a good well-tuned exhaust to try to get every little bit of horsepower we could out of the engine. Uh, and, and of course, vans from a uh, airframe airframe changes, cowling changes, cooling changes under the hood, uh, all combined to uh, result in a sort of a combination of changes that has pretty significantly increased uh, the performance of the airplane. The takeoff distances are certainly short because a lot more power. You really feel it when you when you push, you probably notice that, when you push the throttle in, yeah. it really growls and it really goes. It really uh, does. And, and it'll get you off the ground really, really quick. So. Over the last couple of years, we've made a few changes, um, a few enhancements, if you will, uh, options that we're trying to give to people that build and fly our airplanes, uh, and this is another great example of that. This is just a, you know, probably a what I call a much larger project size, both in terms of the collaborative effort that went on between the companies and you know the amount of time that it took. But uh, but the result is really great. It's fun. It's really fun to fly. And I think what stands out for me is is. You know, some airplanes, and this is a fairly lightweight airplane, it's a 2050 right. gross, I believe. Uh, you know, it's not, we're not talking about a 3,500 pound airplane here. Right. This is, this right. is a, a, a lightweight, still very sporty airplane right. uh, with 215 horsepower and a good size prop. And a lot of airplanes with that sort of power to weight ratio uh, kind of feel like they're overpowered. It feels like it's uh, it, it's not really super happy with that amount of power. Right. And that's simply not the case here. This airplane. It seems like it's very happy with this power. The performance is certainly there. Yeah. But I think the important thing is that you haven't nibbled away at the handling at all. Uh, you know, it's it's its mission is different than an RV7 and an RV8. Obviously, it's a more more intended to kind of as I think we sure. said earlier, sort of somewhere between if a if a seven and a ten got together and had a kid, yeah. this would kind of be the outcome. And, and yeah. it really does fit that. It's a bigger cabin. It's a, a better airplane for well, I wouldn't say better. It's a different airplane. Uh, for long distance travel, it's it's right. for you know and for somebody who wants to do that primarily. Right. I think this is a really good platform. You still get the RV7 fun, right? And I mean, it looks like an RV7. Uh, it's above an RV7, right? It's a big RV7. Yeah. Like you said, you know, we're not rubbing shoulders here. We got right. some room next to our elbows. Uh, certainly a lot of baggage area. Just right. general space in the cabin, but the panel's a little further away. Uh, so it looks a lot like an RV7. Uh, got super sized. Uh, it's the RV-10 airfoil, yep. same wing as the RV-10, a little shorter, so a lot of parts in common. So there's a lot of common design that came together to build the RV-14. Fundamentally, what people were asking for was, I have a really good stable airplane that I can still do, you know, plus six, minus three aerobatics in. That'd be a really great cross-country cruiser, cruiser, could make a good IFR platform. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the kind of airplane, I, don't, I mean, you know, what would be nice is if people want to learn in an airplane like this. Yeah. It's a great airplane for that. Um, it certainly has plenty of power, lots of reserve, and it really embodies the total performance concept that we have advanced where, you know, uh, you're landing short, taking off short, uh, your top end is way up there. Uh, it's stable, it's predictable, it's an honest airplane, it's very responsive. Uh, it really does all those things. You don't get quite the same roll rate that you get out of the RV-7. Yeah. Uh, but it's pretty close. You know, it's, it's a little bit bigger, heavier airplane, yeah. but it's all RV. It definitely flies like an RV. Well, it has the control harmony you expect out of an RV. It has the control authority you expect out of one. Yeah. Um, but I think it, uh, it it's, uh, it's completely appropriate for, for the mission, 
and this is an airplane I'd hop in and you know you t ask me can you take it to Florida I'll say yeah we'll oh, give, sure. you, give me your credit card and I'll be on my way right and, um, I've, and I've flown these airplanes from Washington DC down to Florida before and and back and forth and uh, it is it's a very comfortable airplane that does it really really well so we should talk a little bit about performance we're up flying uh, we did uh, a few GPS speed runs um, yeah. And basically, we're able to validate, uh, and I'm looking at my notes here, we, at, uh, now bear in mind, we're not at gross weight here, so some of the numbers we're talking about are uh, maybe not line up exactly with the spec charts, because you have a solo weight and a gross weight. And, we're, and we're pretty much somewhere square, right? We're somewhere in between. in between. So, you know, we were seeing 180 knots true, you know, so that's what, 210 miles an hour, whatever that converts to. I'm, I'm, right. a, I'm a knots guy, so uh, 180 knots true. Uh, at that point, we were at 9.9 uh, .9 gallons an hour, right, so that's kind of a, an hour, yeah. that's sort of a higher cruise level for this engine. And I think... Uh, and that was at 8,000 density altitude. 8,000 density reference, altitude. Yeah. Uh, to get there, we had great climb performance, right. you know, as we were doing some touch and goes. Uh, it was routine to hit 1,800 feet a minute, uh, at, you know, right. as part of the initial climb. And I will say that the climb angle when you're trying to do a VX climb yeah. is basically nothing but fiberglass. It's nothing but cowling in your view. And it, yeah, and, that's, uh, that's what this part of the canopy is for right, right here. Yeah. Well, no, it, you know, it, it's, it is, it is uh, it's fun. It really is fun. But it's, for the first time you do it, it, it feels a little unnatural because the nose is pointed up pretty high yeah. and the airplane is still climbing like crazy. And, yeah. and, uh, but it'll, it'll do it. It'll get you off the ground in just a couple few hundred feet and it'll keep you going right from there. Well, and you had me pull back to VX, and I you know, resisted it because it just felt wrong from the deck angle was so high, but, right. you know, the airplane ultimately was pretty controllable. I didn't have a ton of rudder in. Right. It didn't want to roll, uh, so, you know, that part of the development is really good. So we've got good good cruise performance, really good climb performance, and, and I think part of that, too, is you could do a cruise climb at 140 knots or 130 knots indicated, and you're right. still doing 800,000 feet a minute. Right. And that kind of thing where you see over the nose, you're really making... You're making distance on your trip, but you're still right. climbing really well. And you know we're here just a few miles from Aurora, at 5,500 feet for smooth air. Right. It took us no time at all to get here. So right. that's a real nice thing. People think, well, rocket ship performance is great for a sporty airplane, but it's also right. really good for a cruising airplane if you want to get up above the popcorn clouds or get the right. smooth and cool air. A lot of airplanes, you're going to jump in the airplane, and for you to get to 8,500 feet or 10,5 or whatever you want to do, it might take a while. Yeah. You have to figure well. How much time is it going to take me to get there? Is it really worth it to do it? You don't right. have that problem with this airplane. Right. The other thing is that we're flying right now. We're burning about eight and a half gallons an hour and right. flying at 165 knots true right. at 6,500, 7,000 feet density altitude. Right. So, yeah. you know, it's while it'll go and it'll go really fast and do it on a fairly efficient uh, basis, uh, you pull it back a little bit and go into an economy, and you get, right. you get a lot of really good economy performance out of the engine as well. So that's nice. Now, and I think a lot of people have this misperception that a big engine is always going to suck down a lot of fuel. And really, this is a this is a big engine, and it makes a lot of horsepower, but it's also a surprisingly efficient engine. Right. Uh, this engine, as it's configured, will run Alina Peak uh, yep. very comfortably. Uh, and so, like you say, we're right now at a sort of a lower setting because we're not going anywhere. Right. Uh, and we got, you know, 165 knots true on the Dynon. We've got a sky view in front of us. And, uh, you know, it's now at 8.6 gallons an hour. And it's not even really aggressively winged. We could do a little bit better right. than that. So you have that combination. Plus, you have 50 gallons of fuel on board. So you have decent endurance. Uh, at the same time, you're, you're going pretty quickly. So, you know, it, it doesn't pay a penalty at the low end of things. Uh, the, the airplane right. is really very uh, very easy going in terms of the pattern. It was easy to land. Uh, I don't fly a ton of RVs regularly, and I felt comfortable in this pretty much at the first landing. And right. Uh, right. it was very easy for me to figure out what the airplane wanted uh, and uh, very predictable. Uh, we did a, sol a stall series. Uh, the stalls, when the airplane is clean, gives you a t it gives you a huge rattle, and basically you almost can't get it unless you accelerate the stall. You really can't get a very strong break. Uh, with the flaps out, uh, we did get a stronger break, but as soon as you come back in with power, release the nose, it yeah. flies immediately. And the thing is, it has so much power, you don't really need you don't need to burn like that. A little no. bit will correct you. So. you let, let the nose down a little bit, add a little bit of power, and it's it's making positive positive climb at that point in time. The other, the other thing is, in terms of, you know, that's probably important to understand about this engine is that it actually weighs less than 390A. Yep. So, you know, with the uh, accessory pad 
blanked out those parts taken off the back of the engine. You know, it's taken several pounds off the engine, and that's just another benefit. So well, it takes know, it off where where it counts on the nose. So on it makes the, front of the airplane, the airplane right. a little more balanced, makes it a little more fun to fly that way. Exactly. That pretty much covers what we've experienced here over uh, a, a long day of flying. It's been uh, terrific. I appreciate the time. I uh, uh, appreciate you coming out. It's been fun. We'll, uh, we'll have a full write-up on uh, Kip Planes uh, in the uh, December issue of the magazine, plus uh, web version. Uh, let us know what you, uh, what you like out of our video uh, series. If there are any particular questions you have about the airplane, we can get uh, Greg on the YouTube comments and uh, get you some answers. Uh, but in the meantime, appreciate you riding along. Thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.